So my name is John, and I am the project lead for Buddy Press. I have been since uh, about 2009 and a half. Um, buddy camps are usually funny, I think, because there is a wide array of experience with the platform. And we have all day, and we have a very small crowd. We have a very niche group of people that are either already interested in it because they're using it, they have heard about it and don't know what it is, they maybe know what it is but are totally overwhelmed and confused by what it is they're supposed to do with it, or they just want to hear more about it to figure out if it is the right tool for their potential job. So I have a tendency to start off pretty low, and then we kind of ramp up as we go. So, which is why David, I think, kind of prefaces this with a, we've got all day, we're gonna try and be a little bit casual. We do have an agenda. We're going to try and stick to some of these talks so that everyone that is here for a specific talk is gonna get out of it what they had come to get out of it. But at the same time, today is for you. It is all for everything from question and answers at the end or the beginning, everything from BuddyPress 101 to contributing to open source to communities and everything else. So uh, where I think someone like Matt Mullenweg's traditional state of the word is a very polished and practiced and presented presentation about the state of WordPress in the world, uh, my approach tends to be a little bit more casual, uh, which is to say that um, BuddyPress does not power 25% of the internet. Yes. Not yet. Uh, although, if you think about it at a, a high level, BuddyPress powers the website that helps power 25% of the internet because BuddyPress is listening on very large portions of WordPress.org to aggregate all of the activity that is happening across the entire ecosystem that powers WordPress.org. So every commit, every ticket comment, every little snippet of activity and more going in on a constant basis gets pushed back into an activity stream that lives on profiles.wordpress.org. Profiles.wordpress.org is one site uh, that through the, the magic of uh, multi-site, multiple networks, domain aliasing, a bunch of weird sunrise.php hacks, runs on buddypress.org. It is one site uh, that has buddypress on it, and then every other site, wordpress.org track even, which is Python, uh, have a bunch of endpoints and listeners to push content back in to your wordpress.org profile. So even though buddypress isn't, you know, all over the internet, it is powered by one very large website that uh, you might not necessarily know that it's listening and hanging out on. And if you've heard me talk before, or um, if you've heard me talk about BuddyPress before, if you've been here every single year and you're sick of hearing me say this, uh, installations like WordPress.org I think are really where BuddyPress as a tool or as a plugin or as a project really do shine. Where BuddyPress is not the emphasis where the social network part of your community is not necessarily the place where people are coming to interact with each other. Certainly BuddyPress can do those things, and it is very good at them in my very biased opinion. Uh, but at the same time, I think that we are all sort of burnt out with all of the communication that can happen online and all of the directions that it happens in. So trying to roll out this brand new social network and hey, come sign up in this place and hey, let's all be friends and do this one thing uh, is not really the way that we choose to interact with communities anymore. I think 10 years ago that may have been like, yeah, we can do this. Go social networking. Um, but I think today we're, you know, a little, it's a little bit different. Think of how many like Slack networks, like who here has signed up for Slack? Who here, show of hands, has multiple Slack networks that they are part of? Who here has turned off notifications like across Slack completely? Because it's just so much. And it's nice to be able to tune it, to go in and say keywords and ignore a bunch of stuff and go into, but it takes a day 
And it takes a day to set up two-factor across all these networks, and it takes a day to like tune all of like who you're listening to and what channels you're in. And they've got DMs, and DMs are groups of people, and so you've got a private group with ten people and channels. It's like yeah, there's so much, and it's powerful, and it's super awesome, and it's great, and we love it, and it's the best thing ever. But it's just completely and totally overwhelming. So, what I like to think of, because I guess you know I'm tend to. Uh, accidentally influence Buddy Press to go in maybe some directions that I am personally feeling on any given day, but the entropy of just notification overload uh, is uh, something that I like, feel on a constant basis of trying to uh, really truly dial in the relevancy of what it is that is going on, which is where profiles.wordpress.org conveniently doesn't really ping you a whole lot about what it is that is happening in WordPress.org. Uh, it's purposefully dialed back in a way that you can subscribe to things. There is like a little dashboard in your profile to add some regex to sneak through activity that's coming in and alert you when things are going on. But it is purposefully tucked away to be sort of a power feature where if that is a thing that you want to get notified to, you'll find it because you're looking for it. We are not going to try and inundate you with, uh, with those kind of things. And uh, some of the end-to-end -end user features that I think are kind of the most cool and unique for BuddyPress, we don't use on WordPress.org. And what we do use, we use in uh, unique and uh, and I think kind of creative ways. Like we don't have private messaging between WordPress.org users turned on. And back in the early 2008, 9, and 10 sort of era of imagining deploying profiles to WordPress.org and what that might look like, we had totally architected out on multiple whiteboards like, oh, we can have, like plugin authors can do support and they can do like private support with like their users. So that way it's not public. If someone wants to ping them, they'll have like private messages to talk back and forth. And then like WordCamps can set up groups and then groups can have, you know, discussion forums for the WordCamps themselves. And like over a period of time, we have kind of gotten there with WordCamps. Uh, but so many other of these things that we really felt strongly that BuddyPress could handle and take care of really well for WordPress.org, the reality is that even at scale, even with a, a team of volunteers, even with experts and professionals that care and want to deploy that feature and maintain it on an almost full-time basis, that for the four million users that there was on WordPress.org back then and for the nine million that there are now, that opening up private messaging and saying like, hey guys, like, go crazy, is like a big deal, even for experts, so it just, wasn't worth it. It was a, a moderation burden, and uh, why why turn it on if no one is really clamoring for it yet? And a lot of that, a lot of that experience is largely what ended up influencing the direction that BuddyPress, the open source core project, took. Back when the early days of BuddyPress, as a plugin, you would install it, and you would get like the experience that BuddyPress had crafted for you. There was a default theme, and you had to use that theme. You had no choice. Uh, the BPSN parent theme. Does anyone remember BPSN parent? Oh, it's so much fun. Uh, the BP social network parent. I mean, it was, uh, it was intentionally a social networking theme, and it was a theme that you had to activate on the root of a multi-site install. BuddyPress had to be multi-site. This theme had to be on the root. If neither of those things happened, BuddyPress would not work. And those were the early days of you know, how it was supposed to be. And in many ways, like sort of my favorite way, I think, to, to make it work, because I think on a long enough timeline of using BuddyPress and deploying it and figuring out how it works, you naturally end up wanting that as your installation type and architecture anyways. Um, so when it comes to the state of BuddyPress today, what we have done really is taken what we've learned from 
not deploying a lot of these pie in the sky ideas and features to WordPress.org back in the early 2010s and have taken that as the direction for BuddyPress as a project today, uh, where everything used to be active by default, we have turned a bunch of things off on purpose. Uh, private messaging, turned off. Uh, groups, I think, might be turned off now, though I don't, I don't remember anymore. The only things that I know for sure end up getting turned on are profiles and activity streams and then signups. Hey, John, hello. I like that you tried to sneak in the back door so that I could purposefully draw attention to you as you, as you walk in. That's fun for me. Um, so for BuddyPress specifically, uh, WordPress.org, and we've had stats on some of this stuff the entire time, and Otto and everyone did a really good job of cleaning them up. Uh, but I like to look at the stats page enough to get an idea of, one, how fragmented are our upgrades or installation types, uh, which to me, I hate that there are so many colors personally, right? Like there are just so many, like the volume of active installations is still really high, but this is the best it's ever been. It has been very terrible for a very long time. Uh, one, I think it's just over time people either abandon or get rid of the old installations because they don't ramp up to users the way that they thought or whatever, so they just naturally attrit. Uh, others, people go through the hoops and they upgrade them. Older installations that had older versions for a while, uh, we played pretty fast and loose with backwards compatibility back in the day because, you know, we only had a few hundred thousand downloads or whatever it was, so we could kind of tweak some things. Um, now that we have millions of downloads, at least 100 com reporting back, thousand active installations, uh, and probably another 100,000 more that don't report back because they are private intranets or communities that have, they're purposefully locked down, so we're not going to see what's going on there. Uh, it, we we kind of have to pay a little bit more attention to what it is that we are going to potentially break uh, and, and be a little bit more cognizant of and respectful of the developer time that goes into deploying enormous or at least complicated social networks or intranets for people that are relying on the software. So uh, it's good to see that these numbers are, uh, a big chunk of them is the current latest stable version. Uh, but I think we will naturally close in on getting rid of the really, I mean 1.9 is like a long time ago. So it's, you know, to see that that's still on the list is, uh, you know, it is what it is. Um, while I'm here, I will make a call out to anyone that may want to redesign our header. I mean, this, this is, I did this, so it's my fault <laughs> that it is like this. I also designed, like redesigned the Buddy Press logo and, without realizing, and I only just noticed this like two weeks ago. If you turn it 90 degrees, you have like an accidental Pac-Man. It's like, yeah, I, I, you know, I really like Pac-Man, so it's like a, I subliminally incepted a Pac-Man into my own project's logo. I don't know. So, uh, yeah. There's a lot of stuff that's going into BuddyPress 2.5, which I can talk all day about at this point also. Um, but I know that when, um, when David had shot some ideas about what I should talk about, some talking points, some pain points, all those kind of things, that uh, one of the things that I have, I would say, actively side about on Twitter is sort of like what to do with the social network like conundrum or uh, uh, the, how, how to remarket, I guess, BuddyPress in a way where people don't think like I need to have my own Facebook in order to use BuddyPress type of problem. And uh, I think that we have a lot to learn in relation to WordPress in that way, where we've all heard, you know, like the WordPress is for blogging. And somewhere along the way, like that became a bad thing. I don't know why that was. Uh, but I, th I think on a, on a long game, on, the, on a long enough timeline, 
WordPress being known for blogging will only always help it. Like you will, it you know what it is from the get go because a blog is always the same. Content, maybe a sidebar, maybe a header. It's it. It is just a title and some content. All the bells and whistles and stuff that we bolt on top of it are convenient. They're really awesome. But a blog is like the simplest type of possible website that you could really truly have. And we choose to trick it out however we want. Uh, some people want a Tesla for a blog, right? Like I wouldn't want my Tesla, but not everyone needs a Tesla for a blog. Sometimes you just need a smart car or a bicycle. So WordPress is like your your conduit to get your content published from one place to the other. Or BuddyPress, we always used to call it like social networking in a box was like the old school, the original slogan. But I think social networks mean so many different things to different people. And there is a core set of functionality that comes with every social network that you are on. <laughs> Even like weird ones like Peach. Who's on Peach? Right? Like, okay. Like you've signed up for it, you're like, okay, I gotta squat my username. I don't want anyone to take it, right? And someone got JJJ, like I don't know how that happened, because I was like on it. Someone already had it. Uh, but it doesn't it's weird. Like you don't the UI is weird, you click on stuff and like it doesn't interact with you. I don't know. But you have a profile. People have some semblance of an activity stream. You have the ability to private message each other back and forth. Uh, you can follow people and they call it friends, but it's sort of following. I don't know, the whole, their whole thing is weird, but it's cool that people are still actively trying to experiment with new flavors and directions and variations of social networks. So uh, whether or not you want to call it that, these things are networks of people being social. But for some reason, when people hear social network, it's like, fingers on the chalkboard, you don't want to, oh, I don't need that, or I'm not part of it, or I'm not joining another one, or whatever. So uh, when I talk about what has now sort of become like Buddy Press's identity crisis, uh, it's not because there's anything wrong with Buddy Press, it's because there's something wrong with how we perceive a plugin that is supposed to power, or that could power and scale to like really big social network type things, like WordPress.org, where we're shoving activity down it. Uh, or you just having a community for your meetup group or Dart League or whatever the other like relatively lame examples that I've used forever are. So uh, throughout the day, if you can do me a favor, because I will be here until Monday, while you're listening to me drone on and on about BuddyPress for a couple hours and while you're seeing or thinking about uses and deployments or your own things, kind of try to give it a think about what it is that uh, what it is that you would want for WordPress to do that maybe WordPress shouldn't do but BuddyPress could. So that's why it has notifications. It's why it has a log of what it is your users are doing. That's why it has a way for users to communicate back and forth with each other because WordPress doesn't. And because we have fewer installations, because we have a smaller community, we have the opportunity to bend WordPress in really cool ways uh, at a scale that lets us move the social side of the web in a different direction. Uh, BBPress, the forum software, is a little bit typecast. It is forums. Forums have been around since before blogs. We get what forums are. There are some neat things we can do now with BBPress. Uh, but they don't largely influence the things that we could maybe do with BuddyPress. And <clears throat> for a little bit of the fun backstory, which I like to talk about, so if you've heard it again, I'm sorry to bore you with it, but uh, BuddyPress sort of came from the idea of having a bunch of social features on WordPress.com. which is why it was originally multi-site only. And so now if you look at, really as a case study of where BuddyPress is today and where WordPress.com is today, with or without Jetpack at this point, there are many parallels. Regardless of automatic, 
taking a very roundabout, long way to get there. Uh, WordPress.com has notifications through Jetpack notifications. Um, you have sort of an activity stream via the WordPress.com reader. You go to WordPress.com, you are following a bunch of blogs, and you get all of the activity for everyone it is that you're following. The only thing that WordPress doesn't, or WordPress.com doesn't really give you, it doesn't close the loop of me being able to follow what any individual WordPress.com user is doing across WordPress.com. And really that's by design, that is on purpose. That is a thing that I lobbied heavily for while I was at Automatic was put something somewhere for me to follow Matt and see what Matt is commenting on across WordPress.com. Give me a way to find the people that are influencing me uh, and follow them around the 60 million blogs, including Jetpack ones, and see what it is that you are doing. Not in like a creepy way, but like I wanna, I wanna know what you think is cool without having to ask you, or I wanna you know, be able to fight, figure it out. And uh, so BuddyPress, was original, and largely because of the way that WordPress.com is architected as a code base. BuddyPress was originally several must-use plugins. They were MU Friends, MU Activity, MU, gosh, what would it have been at that point? Profiles, MU Groups, and MU Blogs. And all of these drop-in plugins for multi-site WordPress were intentionally built to hook into all of the cool WordPress.com stuff that was going on and make WordPress.com a very large blogging social network. And for BuddyPress as a piece of software, on WordPress as a piece of software, the relationship there I think is really, really great. I think there's it's such enormous amount of potential for something like a blogging network to actually come back, even though I know that it probably will never come back. Uh, because BuddyPress is there to listen and talk to and aggregate all this activity across all these sites and enable you to almost turnkey have your own WordPress.com. I mean, that's kind of cool, right? So, part of what I think and part of why I think BuddyPress has the opportunity and maybe would benefit from some kind of a pivot in a way. Two reasons, I think. One, um, because even though WordPress multi-site is now part of WordPress core, you still will end up with fewer WordPress installations on the long run because Jetpack is sort of distributing the idea of multiple sites across multiple installations. So if you wanted to have multi-site WordPress, in theory, you could just install Jetpack and you could have sites all over the place. You could have sites on different hosts and different servers in different parts of the world. And you can use your WordPress.com account in the middle to log in and comment and see what it is that's going on across all of those things. So uh, what BuddyPress was originally purpose built for, I can see on the, the dark side of WordPress installations where you might not want to use BuddyPress at all because that type of installation is already uniquely popular. It doesn't really, is not the thing that people are doing. But at the same time, uh, if that is what you want, uh, if you do want to have your own network of blogs, uh, there are lots of examples that I could think of if we want to talk about many of them. Uh, BuddyPress, I think, is the ideal solution for that. So what we would like to do is tune BuddyPress for the use cases that users are uh, really truly using it for, the way that we are sort of tuning WordPress for publishing to the web. Um, I'm trying to think of, um, I had a really good, oh, so who here knows Jeremy Felt at Washington State University? or knows of him, right? I mean, okay, so. Um, so I should get this off the screen because it's kind of a dumb slide to have up here for the live stream the entire time. How about we just do this? No one can look at anything. You have to look at me now. Um, Washington State University 
if you haven't seen it, is like an enormous WordPress multi-site installation. Also multi-network. Uh, they have networks for schools and alumni and for each individual school so that uh, school admins can have some access and control over some sites but not others. It's all open source. It's all on GitHub. Uh, it's pretty dope and you should check it out. Uh, uh, is wsu.edu, right? Uh, I guess I could probably pull it up. But yeah, wsu.edu. Um, and you wouldn't know it. And largely, I mean, I know because I've asked, uh, there are over 150 growing sites uh, and they're running internally, I think, like on a school server. And they're all public, I mean, for the most part, to the internet. And so even with WordPress with a bunch of sites on one, I mean, probably relatively beefy server, uh, he built like a cool stats dashboard. He's got all this cool stuff that he's largely open sourced all of it. Uh, but an installation like that uh, is perfect for something like BuddyPress, where you have lots of users, lots of people interacting, lots of people, lots of content going in to listen to. Even if you don't reveal it and you don't advertise the fact that you have a profiles area or section across your school, and I know that they have one BuddyPress site, I think, like specifically for alumni that they've set up. They have maybe a few that they're trying to architect and figure out. Um, but in an environment like that, is kind of awesome because you have this hugely active network of people that are constantly publishing content inside of a niche closed in WordPress installation that isn't connected to Jetpack and publishing stuff all over the place. And it isn't necessarily about spamming the web with your content. It is about the people that are going to or interested in Washington State University. And for the types of neat intranet installations, Starbucks, whatever else that we've seen BuddyPress get used on and for, uh, it is the, the public facing ones that I can point to and go, hey look, it's so cute, that are the ones that I wish that I had, uh, I had more access to. Um, and, I, and I think because BuddyPress ends up being, uh, it's a lot to do. Uh, but also because it is uh, largely related to people's privacy and their profiles and what they're doing, and because a lot of people don't publish content every day to their blog the way that they tweet or publish to Facebook or whatever, that uh, we don't really see a whole ton of amazing BuddyPress installations come across. Hi, David. Um, I can talk about BuddyPress 2.5. If you want to talk about that, BuddyPress 2.5 is pretty sick. I'll just get that out of the way right away. Um, one of the, I think, gosh, I mean, Paul Gibbs has worked on a feature that's in 2.5 for probably the past like five years. And, uh, Partly inspired, he had a plug-in. Paul Gibbs is one of the leads uh, on the BuddyPress project. He's been around since probably as long as I have been around and lurking and building and architecting and committing. And he had a plug-in that was really popular uh, called the Welcome Pack. And it was like a critical missing piece for a social network or a network with open signups where uh, users can just create accounts on your WordPress installation. And uh, again, because BuddyPress was born in a day when there wasn't custom post types and taxonomies, and we didn't really have a popular, proper switch to blog. Uh, we didn't have a lot of caching stuff that was in there now. Uh, BuddyPress was basically a separate application that just happened to live inside of WordPress. So uh, now we are to the point where we can trust all of these core functionalities and tools. So uh, we largely, Paul and uh, IMath and Ray and a few others that chipped in, uh, built a way to um, create and manage all of the emails that uh, BuddyPress is going to potentially send out to the point of, hopefully my local install isn't totally broken. 
uh, being able to customize them in the WordPress customizer. I know this probably isn't cool anymore because everyone is doing cool stuff with the customizer. Okay, but uh, I think it's uh, it's pretty neat to be able to match your HTML emails that your social network type installation can send out uh, in a customizer and be able to see what it's going to look like, you know, real real time to make it match whatever the motif is of your uh, of your theme. And then uh, what we do is we use the uh, content editor. We're going to kind of, I think, massage the UI a little bit more, but the visual editor ends up being the HTML version, and then we fall back to the excerpt for text only. So you could have a variant for text only emails. Uh, but these are logically stored as uh, just custom post types and we uh, group them together with a undercover taxonomy to lump together how they're all going to be categorized and whatever so uh, I remember when uh, when custom post types were first rolled into WordPress and WordPress 3.0 uh, we got lots of questions about when or why or if BuddyPress will move everything from the uh, custom database tables that it uses. And it does, um, it does use a bunch. Um, where would they be here? So anything, all of these would be, I don't know, we've got maybe 13 of them if you have everything turned on. Because we take a model very similar to WordPress. We have objects and we have metadata. So notifications are an object, groups are an object, profiles are an object, and on and on and on. So installing BuddyPress suddenly gives you, boom, like all these database tables that you're not used to using because you're used to WordPress having custom post types and taxonomies. Register a post type for this and for this and for that and for that. And Part of the reason why BuddyPress was built this way was to scale across millions of sites on WordPress.com. In theory, we've got up to trillions of rows that we can shove in a table relatively reliably in MySQL. So, okay, we'll just shove a bunch of data in it if we want to, and you know, it'll kind of be okay. Um, eventually, we could shard it. We have all sorts of cool code and logic to shard BuddyPress database tables if that's a thing that you eventually need to do. Uh, so we have thought relatively far ahead in that capacity, but uh, with the, uh, I don't know, improvements that have gone into register post type, custom post types, and managing custom post types, uh, back then the answer was like, there's absolutely no way that we will ever move BuddyPress to custom post types. That was like, that was the clear and obvious answer was nothing will ever move to custom post types. Um, Today, though, there are some uses for custom post types that actually work really well, like emails, because we can switch to a root blog of a site very quick now. Switch to the root, get whatever email it is that you want to send out, send that email out from the root, and now you're good, because largely most BuddyPress installations are either on a single site, because you just have one primary social network site thing that you're doing, or you want to send an email probably from the root of that site with its title tag and its kind of branding from the root site and everything else. So uh, that's where we start on a very long sort of scale. We come back to the idea of having BuddyPress largely communicating to and from the root installation or the root site on a multi-site network, which is how BuddyPress originally was in 2007 and 8. So you can see how uh, maybe we kind of were right on accident and then we shuffled around while things in multi-site moved around and now we start going back to the way that that was before. And we had dreamt up some other uh, neat ideas for using custom post types and taxonomies that we ended up not doing. Um, ideas that at this point I'm pretending to experiment with myself just to see like how viable that these ideas might actually be. But you could, it's just data, they're just sitting in database tables somewhere. You can tell BuddyPress that friends data lives on one site and activity stream data lives on another site and group data lives on another site. 
we have fairly robust sort of ways to categorize and tag things and put users in buckets and whatever else. Now that we have taxonomy term meta, we can kind of do anything. It all kind of fits. So uh, how we have decided the direction that BuddyPress should go has changed a bunch of different times. Uh, and the, even though it hasn't changed code-wise, it has changed like spiritually, which is why I think uh, maybe it's just me because I get stir crazy after a while. But uh, I I would like to see uh, I would like to see more people start considering Buddy Press as uh, as doing a lot of the things that WordPress can't than doing all of the things that social networks can. Does that make sense? Uh, one of the things that, actually one of the reasons that I first got uh, really heavily active in the WordPress community and found WordPress and BuddyPress and BBPress at the same time is because I didn't understand how WordPress didn't have like an author page. Like when you went to author slash admin, you just got more posts. That was really confusing to me because I didn't care about my posts. I cared about like, I want I want you to see who I am. I'm the author. Like this is I'm at the author URL. Why is there just posts here? And then I was like, okay, let's do some digging. Oh, okay, I guess that makes sense. It's there could be a lot of authors, could be whatever. That's cool, but it, I don't. That's not what I want. Then so then it was how do I find profiles in in WordPress? And there wasn't really anything. And Andy Peatling had kind of, he had still just launched buddypress.com as like a thing and it was sort of pretend open source where he had a repo on I don't know where SourceForge or whatever. Uh, and it was, okay, well, this is the way to do that and it is still not very awesome. So maybe we can try to make it more awesome. Uh, and then BB Press had profiles, but it was forums and I didn't want forums. And then I had to try and figure out how to integrate all of them together. You here, and I know there there are people here that remember the like deep integration, but like like hacking all these config files together and like making sure that they didn't collide on top of each other. And you had all these like separate things, and there was something that felt like really cool about doing it. Like it felt like you were like I don't know, you're like doing all these secret things that like no one was supposed to know how to do. And there was, I used to joke that there was like a four install minimum for all of these things. Like you had to, it was like the, the first time was like, oh, well this should be pretty, I don't know what I did, it's not working. And it's never gonna work. Okay, let's just wipe it out completely, start over. And then like you choose a different multi-site install type and then you, and it's like back press collisions. There's like all these problems. And you're like, okay, well I don't, I still don't understand. And like by the time that like the fourth day and the fourth like setup of all these pieces, You'd finally get it working and be like, I'm the smartest person alive. It's a very rewarding experience, even if it was torture. Uh, so we have worked very hard to try and improve that uh, experience quite a bit, where BuddyPress is now like kind of turnkey. You get theme integration right off the bat, um, which I think is actually kind of awesome. Like It works super, super well. Um, who here has not seen Buddy Press's theme integration? Good, because I don't have to talk about it. Yay! Right? Uh, I know. Um, what else do I have? I know there's there's the thing that um, that that I I show off every year um, because I built it and it's like my little Easter egg for Buddy Press that. Uh, that no one ever really pays attention to, but that you can relocate and rearrange your X profile tabs. So if you want to reorder the way that they look or work, you can just move them. And there's nothing really in the UI that would ever hint that you can do that thing. Uh, but the old school UI was just text boxes and you would just put the order number in like pages and it was whatever. I was like, well, that's pretty lame. You're never, you would never really do that. So okay, so you can order your fields, but then you can also drag fields from group to group uh, so that you can put them wherever you want. Uh, so they are fairly agnostic in terms of where you put them and why. And again, it's like, 
you don't it's it's kind of a difficult interaction to try to communicate to an end user that like this is a thing that is possible to do in this interface but it is a thing that you would always want to do as your needs for profile fields grow as you your user base grows and you want to add a new profile field it might not be in the same group that it was before and a lot of these were originally they were like everything else in the development process the decision was sort of hard coded or made for you like these are the groups that you have to have and if you delete a group you're just out of luck uh, and we made that better and uh, we also sort of made it better in a way that still kind of feels like WordPress, which I think is hard to do because WordPress has so many unique little UI elements now. Uh, like the nav menus is totally unique and new. And editing taxonomies is different and users is different. And settings is different. They're all some different experience. And then you go into the media library, I'm like, that's a totally different thing. But for this, I think it sort of still sort of feels like the way that WordPress should feel. And then we, um, even though it's kind of, you know, I guess maybe not the prettiest little thing, but uh, even when you add a new profile field, it still sort of looks like what you would expect in WordPress. And it kind of didn't even used to look this pretty. It was just like forms and a button and like save it and whatever. And so we put a lot of little work into uh, registering proper meta boxes. And uh, if you pick your um, multi fields and you get this neat sort of drag and drop interface for reordering your field. I mean we kind of ended up building a form builder uh, like a primitive one but still a form builder into BuddyPress to get profile fields working in a way that you could actually start working with them in a cool way and then uh, we added a URL field, which is a pretty obvious one that we didn't have because everyone wants a profile URL to somewhere and that comes with its own sanitization and expectations. So we added a URL field in two, three, I think. Um, and uh, a ton of caching improvements in two, five and performance tweaks and stuff. We have a lot more um, I would say, let's find one. I, f I hate using 2012 as like my, uh, I don't know. Okay, we'll use 2016. So a lot of work has gone into, I mean, this is a terrible screenshot that I have back here because it really like, kind of messes with your interpretation of what it is that you're doing. But um, the theme integration, I, I'm sorry, I'm going to talk about it, uh, just works really, really awesomely and ended up working good enough for other plugins to end up sort of following suit, easy digital downloads, WooCommerce, end up using a lot of the same mechanisms and approaches that BB Press introduced that we were able to bring into, uh, into BuddyPress. And uh, when we brought the sort of theme compatibility in, uh, it was feature complete enough in BB Press where it took me about a day to integrate all of it in to BuddyPress. We took the default templates, hacked the header and footer off of them, put them in a directory, made sure we had all the right calls and stuff, and then refreshed the page and did it work. And it turned out that it kind of did. It was actually okay, because we had all of the sort of things in line and in place and documented well enough where Jiggo Shop at that point is an e-commerce e plugin that uh, was sort of the foundation for WooCommerce, and so Jigo used it right away, and then WooCommerce inherited it and made it really awesome. Like, if you've used WooCommerce, their like theme compatibility has like a fancy UI, and it tells you like what templates you might be missing and which one to edit and how to get there, and it'll create it for you. Like, it's really tricked out. So that would be like the crazy cool like end user version of what inevitably we could have in BuddyPress or BBPress. Uh, but we still tend to uh, follow WordPress's philosophies in a lot of ways where uh, we hesitate 
we do kind of do depends on what the thing is. We will it's, if, imagine if I don't know, like WordPress has a theme editor and a plugin editor, but you never use it. And if you do, you're like, oh, I'm gonna, I don't want to break everything. So you kind of don't use the built-in plugin and theme editor. So like BuddyPress or BBPress, like putting time into building this elaborate, really cool, like template editing engine thing would be a lot of work for something that people would go, oh, I don't want to, okay, let's turn it off. I don't ever want to see it. Uh, so we've just never really focused on doing that. But it is, check out WooCommerce's implement, in, is, is awesome, is really cool. Um, let's see, we did a bunch of neat stuff for uh, cover images. So that is largely IMath did the cover image uh, implementation and cropping. So if I, you know, do what everyone's going to do, then maybe just take it. Good enough. Then it automatically on the fly just plops your cover image in there, right? Like, it seems pretty straightforward now. Like, this is commonplace on the web. But the fact that this is using your whatever theme you're using in WordPress could be whatever. Uh, the fact that it is drag and drop on the fly, the fact that it is Ajax and all fancy and fun on the back end uh, and works with any WordPress theme. Uh, is kind of what the the ideal turnkey plugin uh, installation functionality really should uh, work and feel and, and do. So uh, even at the scale of a, a social network, uh, we've tried our best to make it as easy as possible to lower the barrier of entry to getting user registrations and signups and everything all bolted into WordPress as, uh, as easily as possible. And like we were talking about with uh, turning things on and off, um, if you're not familiar, I mean, BuddyPress comes with all of this stuff. And um, I really still enjoy the very primitive look and feel of this layout compared to something like Jetpack that has like fancy modules and tabs and hides all this cool stuff all over the place and you all this discovery and I kind of just think this makes a little bit more sense to me because it looks familiar like a plug-in screen where you turn stuff on and off. Uh, and another of my like favorite dumb little buddy press guilty pleasures is our dash icons are all about like partying. The balloons and the pinata. And so I think Ben is probably going to do like a professional variant of our dash icons for people that maybe want to not have a pinata. Um, but I still sort of like the fact that we have cutesy icons. I also really like that you put like the old school icons, the pay the PNGs on the the banner, like the buddy yeah, camp. Yeah. Oh, it's awesome. So the the PNGs, I don't know if they're still on the codex. Uh, the old ones were PNGs. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I'm even, I might be tethered. Mm, let's see, now I'm, I'm trying to cheat and it's not working. And I can't type, so we have that problem. And now I can't unsee Pac-Man. Like every time I see the logo, I'm like, oh, we don't have them up here anymore. Well, we have the PSD up here. I could just pull up the PSD. It's not worth it. Doesn't matter. Waste of time, kind of, maybe. If you want to see the icons, we have them on shirts available. Or <laughs> a bonus, right? Oh, well, let me see if I've got, it might be worth, I don't know, they're cute. I like them. Maybe not. Oh my goodness. Oh, everyone's going to see all my oh, downloads. Sure. Well, they are. Uh, some some of them are on there. Oh, 
I wanted the full color ones. I want to try and find the PNGs. Do you guys mind? Is this boring you? That's probably a smarter idea. This is why I shouldn't be allowed to use a computer. I really thought we had them up here. Now I feel like I want to solve this problem instead of trying to find the other ones that are out there. It's true. Come on now, where are they? You're right. Yeah, they're not here. Where did they go? That's terrible. Okay. Everyone else has already looked for them. And f oh, look at the look at our Fogo. That's terrible. Who did those? <laughs> yeah, it's not. I gotta, I gotta go. Okay, sorry about that. Thank you for. I'm. I would mistype it every character that you would say. So I'm gonna say, spare everyone that agony. That it would be completely my fault. So yeah, that's. Uh, um, so when we first introduced the cover images on WordPress.org. Uh, the I guess Otto and Scott and Andy were kind of hacking on it and putting the ideas out there for how to put it together. Constantine, I don't know if you were there. I don't remember. Uh, but I was like, people are going to totally try and hack the background image and try and do something to them to make it do or look a certain way. And uh, so it's like the... The, where everyone's plugin is, the background H2 has like funny text shadows and opacities and stuff on it to like try and prevent like background bleed from people like trying to hack the thing or like extend it or do anything. And once it was live, the first thing that I did was like figure out exactly how to hack it and extend something on the end of the buddy press like side. But then it was totally broken for right to left because we didn't support right to left header images. So you just ended up with like this block that didn't make any sense there. And then, uh, and so then uh, Hugo Beta that works at uh, Automatic had designed a header logo uh, or a header image. And we went back and forth for a day. And I was like, I don't like it. And it's got stripes or whatever it was. And I was like, we'll use this one. He's like, oh, dude, it's ugly. Like, I know you're a designer, and I think that you're a really good one. But I don't know. I'm, I'm being picky about my dumb header image. And so then finally, at the end of it, I was like, OK, I'm, putting the, I'm just putting this red. The logo's on one side, and I'll figure the rest out. And so I put our little party hat icon, like, just balanced off the side. And uh, so then when I put the header image up there, the first thing I got was like a ping from like Otto and Andy that were like, why do you have to troll us with better images that screw with the, the name of the plugin? I don't know, I think it's cute. Mm. So, I don't know, does anyone have? I mean, I could talk all day about all sorts of buddy press related things. Uh, well, where are you talking later? I don't know, that's true. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and enlist a bunch of other people for uh, maybe a Google Hangout if I can do that, because you'll be sick of me by then, so. So, oh. Oh, okay, that's good. Not, not really. Conferencia, you plug your, or plug your. That works okay. But yeah, I think. So David's pretty modest. Uh, so he took the Twitter Bootstrap 4 
template or whatever it was that was kind of largely incomplete. Um, no, actually it started off as the like, Twitter, they, they have like a, they, they sold a, uh, like a premium theme template yeah, thing. Kind of, yeah. And uh, so he took that as a starting point, bolted BuddyPress underneath it, and then built a website specifically for conferences and going to conferences and having a profile about what conferences you are going to. and. Uh, was able to use the aspects of BuddyPress for groups and everything else to, uh, I mean, w I, would, I, would, I would hesitate to say without a ton of work, uh, but at least with all of the built-in functionalities that BuddyPress already comes with, searching for users, profiles, all those things, uh, built, I mean, a, a very, I would say, sophisticated looking community website about going to conferences. And so that I think uh, for BuddyPress specifically, the, you, you, you almost absolutely have to use some front end framework to complete a BuddyPress task. You just have to because there are so many pages that you have to stylize and consider that without using semantic UI, Twitter Bootstrap, Framework 7, Ionic, whatever your framework du jour is to make that website, if you're just going to build it like a WordPress theme and try and theme a profile page, an activity stream page, groups, friends, followers, acknowledgements, notices, receive back and forth, the Ajax part of it, you will never finish because you will spend every new thing that you think you need to do will take you a month to dial in and you'll spend forever doing it. If you can use and leverage, I know that people hate to do it. With BuddyPress it works incredibly well. Uh, then you can start off with a, someone that has designed and architected the social networking aspect of the design and you just bolt BuddyPress's functionality into it with the loops and things that you would need to do. Even that takes a long time, but at least you don't have to reinvent all of these things for the web. A, a professional designer that works at Twitter or contributes to Twitter Bootstrap has given you elements for headers, footers, lists, links, buttons, colors, themes, easily switched. There's no reason to do all that on a BuddyPress site. If, and when you do, because I have, it is terrible. It is, it is such an enormous amount of work that no one in their right mind would pay you to do it and you would be reinventing the interface wheel that really awesome people have already solved and, and reinvented that wheel multiple times over. So I think Conferencia is probably my favorite of the things that I have seen in the past 12 months. If anything, because it is, it is fully featured. It is not like it is an incomplete Elite BuddyPress installation. There are groups, there are followers, there are like profile fields that are useful in a useful way. All of those icons, they have icons that matter. Like all these little details that make it look like a fully functioning, polished social network site, David has implemented and put in here. So that is rare. That is rare for a BuddyPress site that I, that I see. Largely they are, we want profiles. We want some aggregation of activity. It is never about the actual activity that is going on and then aggregating a lot of that. Uh, so confer is conferencia.io? Yeah. Right. Um, don't listen to him, he's being modest. Part of the code of conduct should be not talking bad about yourself or the things that you do, David. Okay. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm not, uh, I can't go there. Look, but if you check on the, uh, 
Did I, maybe I missed it. I missed it. This is actually a buddy press group. So you click on attendees. These are the people that check in or join the group. So we basically turn buddy press groups in, into events that you can check into. And of course, if you see all the other things buddy press the groups have, um, which means you can invite other people to the conference, just like you would like to the groups. Um, you can also you can also create buddy press. That's sad, I only have one friend. One friend of me, if you click on photos, or, uh, what we've done is we've, we've extended a buddy press component that automatically grabs photos from the conference and adds them into the buddy press group. So this was WordCamp US, which happened in December. That's why all the photos are here. Uh, how, how, I may have time to set this up for our WordCamp landing for tomorrow. Um, and then we have live. Our live thing is probably the most activity stream on the left hand side, that's the buddy press group activity stream, so you can see when people have checked into a conference, uh, check, check, taking photos, we also have a social page. This is more, this is not really buddy press exactly, this is kind of plugin functionality, but we've kind of turned a lot of this into buddy press components that are attached to the group if that makes sense. So we've extended, <coughs> like, you know, in order to do cool things with buddy press, you don't have to exclusively sit down and write, like, all buddy press code, right? Think of the cool things that you want, and as long as you know how to extend buddy press components, do components, that sort of thing. That's where my brain is stuck. I don't know what's going on. Maybe. Can you see if you have like a big press or other external tools to back up the group you want to stay? This isn't even the key. Yeah, I don't think you've got the key. Uh, yeah. John can talk more about the key press. I don't use this as much, but I don't need that type of form, type of conversation for this. His don't, yeah, and groups and groups doesn't come with it by default. You have to have Buddy Press or you have to have BB Press installed and turned on. That's all I have to say. <laughs> and so I think part of the um, I don't know how much time that this took you. No, I mean, how much time did it take you to build Conferencia? Oh, I worked on a pretty pretty good collection. So. Right. So plugging it into a pre-built, pre-designed-ish theme. I mean, it's it doesn't look like this. David tweaked it and made it look way prettier. But um, like, I think the part of the reason why a monolithic, super powerful, crazy plugin like BuddyPress is still difficult to work with or to use is the payoff isn't necessarily as immediate as installing WooCommerce, selling a bunch of stuff, and seeing money come into, the, into a, your Stripe account. You spend a week building something that you want to build and love and do and hook in all the functionality. You had never seen Conferencia.io before, right? You may have seen it now, and you might never use it again, because it isn't a thing that you are interested in or doesn't, it just doesn't fit into what you're doing. So it is possible to spend an entire full-time week implementing and plugging it all in and making it all work and then nothing, right? So uh, I think that a lot of the times the trouble with trying to power a community or a social network is your return on user registration and signups and activity and everything else is you have to determine what your value is on having a community and a social network. And you know if it's just having it and volunteering it and keeping it there for people, that's one thing. If you're looking to try and monetize it or something weird, it's much more difficult to do, I think, um, than it is. I mean, like code code base for code base, WooCommerce is awesome. It's super powerful. They have a great UX, I think. Great new user experience for signing up and installing the plugin. It's really neat. There's a lot of stuff that we had talked about doing with BuddyPress way back in the day to try and make it livelier. Uh, and WooCommerce did an awesome, awesome job with that. But I, the, the parallels between how people think that a shopping cart should work and feel and how easy it should be and how quickly you can get ramped up with WooCommerce, 
and how popular it has been because everyone wants to sell stuff because you sell something and then you get money for it. Who doesn't want that, right? But when you build a social network, you get no money and you have lots of maintenance and moderation. So. Yeah, I, yeah, when I this, I really <laughs> we all we all do, right? I could probably use well. We could all use a business plan. Does that answer at least one of your questions? I guess. Yeah. Just one follow-up. Sure. What were some of the examples you used that you don't want to like code break from the beginning? You want to use a framework that's already mm. there. What frameworks are you using? So the one that I mean, there's the one that I really like the most. My personal favorite, which has been around forever and is not like a big secret or anything, uh, is Semantic UI. Uh, Amazon uses it in some places. GitHub uses Semantic UI. Uh, you get a, just a bunch of really neat. Um, let me find one that menus is probably the obvious one. So, like, say you go to the GitHub theme. Can everyone see this? Okay enough? Is that fine? Then um, you will start to see similarities between, like, the you know tabs or whatever the layout that you would see on GitHub, but. You get, uh, you know, all of the active hover states, active states, buttons, labels, all the little doodads, the little things that you would otherwise have to add Flourish to and think about, um, you know, how to section and separate things out. Is it horizontal, vertical, pagination, tabs, menus, drop downs, all these things. Uh, and like, you know, mega menus or whatever they're called these days. Um, you know, you get, it comes with a consideration for all these little ideas and things that you might have, which means that you get from, like, from a social network concept to something in a browser very, very quickly. And then, because it's all sort of modern SaaS or whatever they use, you can kind of plug in your own mix-ins and colors and then make your own version of it very, very fast. Faster than you would if you were writing just raw CSS, like you'd be doing it the rest of your life. Um, so I, I, semantic UI is sort of the one that I am yeah, crushing on at this point. Yeah, so BuddyPress will work with any WordPress theme, but you're gonna get our default relatively vanilla looking styling. And we cheat. We use uh, opacity, RGBA, to try and blend into whatever possible background color you might have, because it might not be white, it might be blue or gray or something weird. So we, we try to fit into every possible WordPress theme that it is. And I'm pretty proud of it. I think it works OK enough for like most WordPress themes. Uh, Hugo has done uh, a ton of work into making our default templates and styling for those templates uh, be unique, but still fit into different core themes. So like this is 2016. And if I go to, you know, notifications, at least my header image, I should probably delete because that's pretty terrible. But you know, the fields fit. They are kind of styled to fit the font and whatever else that's here. It's not super wonderful, but if we go to, uh, what is a fair, it's like 2015, like 2015 is a fairly drastic theme. Big chunky sidebar, uh, narrow content area. So if I'm on the same page and I refresh having activated 20 whatever, 15 now, See, we've moved the navigation on the left. Like, we've tried to make it look a little bit different so that BuddyPress will kind of give you a different purposeful experience and a different WordPress default theme. I'm not saying it's beautiful, but it is different and it does fit and it gives you an idea of how BuddyPress can be used in different core themes. Uh, but our st you can see our styling is very bland, blocky, chunky. RGBA to try and hack around opacity on, on top of whatever core customizer stuff you might have in the background. So, sure, keep going. Mm-hmm. 
So the, the difficulty is low. The length of time is high. Because the, the implementation is just hook in buddy presses functions, bolt in the you know wrappers for what the semantic UI or Twitter bootstrap might be, the sections, the classes, all the things. You just look at semantic UI. I mean, they have all of these funny examples. You, could, you can kind of just do a, I mean, you can really cheat. Look at what, uh, where's their list? So take a list. Find one that looks like the list you're looking for. You go, okay, we've got a list of, uh, actually, many might have it called comment. Sorry, I know this is kind of dumb. I hate live demos. I know you hate them too. Comment, here we go. So you go, okay, well, that kind of looks like an activity stream, right? So you go, okay, well, you can expand it open. They give you the HTML for what's here. You copy what's in there. Okay, I've got one section of it. There's my loop. Add your BP has activity. Add your BP has avatar. BP BP username. BP all your add your functions in there, and you're golden, right? Like it's the difficulty is very low, but there are so many templates. There are so many for every one thing, um, and th these are the core templates. And I have a tendency to break them up even further because I. Um, I guess a little weird, but like once we're in here, uh, there's like there. I feel like there should be more. So, oh yeah, so emails. So this, these are all of the little parts. Let me expand this open. Can everyone still see this okay enough to be valuable? So this is just one template, you know, and there's almost 100 lines of code in a template part, and that's just one. That's just the loop of an activity stream. That's not friends, in and out, back and forth, profiles or anything. And once you start getting into single members, we've got all these other templates that are in here, friends, friend requests, groups, what an invitation looks like, notifications, your profile, changing an avatar, cover image, editing, loops, we have all these template parts that need some kind of markup in them because they are theme side. These things happen within the theme. They need consideration that looks and feels like a WordPress theme does. So when a WordPress theme is index.php, single.php, page.php, style.css, boom, made a theme, dog, it's out there. But press is like, oh, here's 200 that you have to go into. So it's easy, because you can just take the loops and open them up and plug and play, but you've got all this work ahead of you to try and theme and make it look the way that you want it to look. Yeah, so what we do... Okay. <laughs> I appreciate that. So what we do, code-wise, and I would try and explain it so that everyone else can kind of get it, is WordPress has a function called the content. It is the, con it is the function that spits out post content. And uh, because BuddyPress is listening, it's a plugin that's paying attention to what URL you are visiting. What happens is we look real early on in the process to see whether or not you're requesting a BuddyPress page. Uh, back in the day, we got super criticized for having our own page routing thing because we didn't use WordPress's rewrite rules. And now that everyone's building like single page apps and has to do their own like Angular and React routers, ha ha, like you're doing exactly what we've been doing forever, lol. Uh, now, uh, we look real early, we say, okay, we know you're loading up, but you're requesting a buddy press page. Uh, let's see if the theme has a template that we can use. So we'll look. Is there a template part there that is one that BuddyPress is looking for? If there's not, then we fall back to templates that exist in the plugin itself. We kind of just hot swap it. We look and say, okay, if the theme actively supports it, use it. Uh, and if it doesn't, then we fall back. So you know how WordPress has parent and child themes? We essentially have our own stack. We have child theme, parent theme, 
and theme compatibility, the fallback directory. And so we hook into the content because we know there's a header there, we know there's a footer there, we know there's no template there, and so we know it's our turn. So we hook into where the content area would normally be, we abandon whatever would normally be there, which would at that point probably be nothing unless there was a page that was there and we do some other stuff there. And then in, a, in an output buffer, we grab our loop, we grab our template part, we compile all the HTML, we spit out that output buffer where the content would normally be, and out it goes. And yeah, yeah, right, exactly. And so uh, using the content is terrible. Like we literally stomp it. We override the content. If there was anything that was useful there, it is gone. No longer exists. But it is effective because it is reliable. We know where the content, everyone puts the content in the same place and it is very certain that that is where you want this output to belong. Uh, so it works okay. There are a couple of different other things that we could maybe do and things that become a little bit weird, like sidebars and headers and footers. Should Buddy Press go messing around with some of that stuff? We don't, uh, but should we? Maybe. Uh, think of like WooCommerce where you might have a shopping cart and a sidebar and it might make sense for you when you're in the shopping cart area to get a shopping cart in your sidebar that shows the items that are in your cart, and whatever else. So uh, there are some things that we could do there, but we don't. And uh, the way that BuddyPress was built, and no one has done this because it is still an enormous amount of work, but the template stack, I call it a template stack. Like I think of pancakes. I think of like, you know, like a stack of locations that are all delicious. And someone could come out with a template pack that was dedicated specifically to one component and they could really dial in what the experience for the activity component should be. You could package it up for 50 bucks, install it as a plugin, it can filter the stack and put itself in wherever it wants and you could have a plugin that would be a template pack that would know that BuddyPress was active, uh, it would come with its own styling and CSS uh, and it could be the de facto awesome way that just one part of BuddyPress would work all the time. Uh, so it was really, truly built in a way that could be hugely extended eventually to create an ecosystem of people that could really hack on dialing in what these pieces look like. But no one's really done it. Companies like Buddy Boss have done a really awesome job of just building great Buddy Press themes. Uh, I don't know if Michael's here. No. Yeah. Uh, so Buddy Pro or BuddyBoss.com. They make awesome buddy press themes. Like fully featured, complete, like actual, like Etsy style, like roll your own Etsy with buddy press kind of themes that are pretty baller. Um, I'm getting kicked off. So uh, thank you for letting me drone on for a while and bearing with me and I'll be back I think in the afternoon to bore you to death before, uh, before too long. And thanks for letting me uh, hang out.